So we got very interested in this, obviously, because it didn't make much sense to us. Um, you know, three-hour muscle protein synthesis response, even though plasma leucine initiation factors were still elevated at three hours, still actually like maxed out at three hours. So we, we again, we didn't invent the term, but we, we uh, what would you say, we appropriated the term <laughs> refractory response. And you know, kind of showed that it, muscle protein synthesis becomes refractory to sustained elevations in amino acids. And th this is about the time me as a bodybuilder, my wheels start turning. I'm thinking, I'm eating eight meals a day, trying to eat little meals throughout the day to keep, you know, the idea to keep a constant stream of amino acids going in. And I would eat, eat casein a lot too, because, you know, keep a constant stream of amino acids going in. That's what everybody had always told me as a bodybuilder. I said, well, hang on a second. If that's creating a refractory response, wouldn't that might be a bad thing? So we started looking to possible explanations, and the, I, the best one we came up with was actually from my colleague, uh, Dr. Gabriel Wilson. And Gabe had this crazy idea that maybe, you remember we talked about that energy has an input into this whole system, right? Because if you don't have enough energy, you don't want to be creating a lot of muscle protein. Gabe said, what protein synthesis is energetically expensive. So what if it's so powerful? What if the response to a meal is so powerful that you actually start depleting ATP after a meal, okay? After a certain time after a meal. And so he's, he proposed this idea that you would have, it could be from decreased ATP. And we actually, when we measured it, the groups that were getting the response of muscle protein synthesis. So we looked at, we looked at actually uh, wheat versus whey. So we found that in the wheat group, ATP in the cell did not go down, did not go down the muscle cell because there was no muscle protein synthesis response. But in whey, it significantly dropped. It was funny because I remember when he proposed this at uh, Experimental Biology and he about got laughed off the stage. <laughs> they didn't laugh when we published it in AJP. Uh, so because muscle protein synthesis is an ATP dependent response, when you increase it, it decreases ATP. This is also why whey is thermogenic. This is also why whey has a fat burning effect. So the same thing that makes protein anabolic is also the same thing that makes it uh, have a fat burning effect. Why high protein, we believe why high protein diets work, okay, are better at decreasing body fat. Because if you think about, we always think of efficiency as a good thing, right? Like when somebody says the word efficiency, you think good. In terms of body composition, in terms of fat loss, efficiency is a terrible thing. You want to be as inefficient as possible at creating energy in your body. Because if it takes you more energy to create ATP, that means you're burning more calories. You're more thermogenic. Okay? So pro when you have a high protein meal, it activates kind of this feudal cycle. You create more muscle protein or you create more protein. That requires ATP and that causes a fat burning effect. So that's kind of an interesting little side note. So does it mean that the wheat protein is less thermogenic? Exactly. And that's why we believe, we actually did a, Chris Moulton in our lab did a very interesting study. In that long-term study, we showed that um, at the end of the study, whey, animals fed whey were significantly leaner than animals fed wheat. Uh, almost by, I believe it was like a 30% difference. Or it was like, a, like they were, Whey animals were just under 10% body fat, and wheat animals were almost 14. Um, and they all started out about the same body fat. He did a, what he did was he tracked how many total calories these animals ate. And then based on the body fat levels, what tissues they went to, right? So what he found was 50% of the calories that were eat, uh, taken in by the animals fed wheat went to fat, and 50% went to lean tissues. And the animals fed whey 80% went to lean and 20% went to fat. It's pretty cool. It was a pretty cool calculation, I thought. So if the lean protein was to have the same content as leucine content as the whey, would it be as thermogenic as the protein? We don't have that data, but I will say I would think so because we when we got a lot of criticism about, well, you can't prove that leucine is the, the, the variable that's causing all this, we said, okay, fine. We'll take wheat, the lowest quality protein that we know of, and we will 
add free leucine to match the leucine content of whey. And what we found was that when we did that, the muscle protein synthesis response was completely the same. It was almost identical. Wheat and whey were almost identical when you matched leucine content. So I would think that yes, you would, that it's pretty much the leucine, that it's that, that activation of the, the muscle protein turnover that's so thermogenic. But decreased ATP isn't, all, isn't uh, great for muscle mass, okay? Isn't great for keeping muscle protein synthesis going. So, and we actually showed that you got an increase in AMP kinase about two or three hours after eating a meal that had enough leucine to hit the threshold, okay? So you get this response, you get a muscle protein synthesis response, and then it starts to come down because you're starting to get decreases in ATP. So what we wanted to look at was, okay, if we could supply substrates that will increase muscle ATP levels, or restore muscle ATP levels, could we extend the duration of muscle protein synthesis? Does that make sense? So we gave animals either uh, about an hour and a half to two hours after their meal, we gave them carbohydrate, for obvious reasons, glucose supplies ATP, or leucine, or leucine plus carbohydrate. The reason we gave them leucine was because that leucine is unique or branched amino acids are unique in their ability to be metabolized directly by the muscle for ATP. Okay, they can be, they, the, muscle, the skeletal muscle can metabolize them for um, ATP production. And what we found was all three treatments increase the duration of muscle protein synthesis. Okay, so restoring the ATP content of those cells maximize the duration of muscle protein synthesis. So, Hypothetically, this is something that I've gotten some criticism for from some people because they say, well, you can't prove it. Well, I always like to give people my opinion too, just and, but I'll just say it's my opinion. So I think that, you know, um, if you want to maximize muscle protein synthesis, when you, uh, after a meal, maybe, you know, an hour and a half, two and a half hours afterwards, if you can see, consume a free form supplement or a carbohydrate, uh, you can extend the duration of muscle protein synthesis. Now, one of the important things to think about is, now, I'm going to say efficiency and use it as a good term, is caloric efficiency for muscle building, okay? Your anabolic bang for your, anabolic bang for your caloric buck, all right? So I've had people say, well, why don't I just eat, you know, because it equates to about, you know, 50, 40, 50 grams of carbohydrate between meal. Okay, well, if you're, you know, an athlete who's very young, very active, and you're consuming 4,000 calories a day, that, that might be okay. But if you're somebody who's you know, worried about making weight or you are worried about optimal body composition or your metabolism slower, well, you can get about the same response from you know, four to five grams of branch chains. So if you wanna talk about anabolic bang for your caloric buck in terms of extending muscle protein synthesis, that's better. Or a combination of both. And I know Nin asked me, you know, could you take a protein supplement and get the same thing? We don't know. <laughs> because one of the things I think is a little bit unique about freeform is that it it's uh, gets into the bloodstream so rapidly that it causes such a rapid response. I think that may be part of how it's able to overcome that refractory response. But I would, I would actually like to t rerun that with, you know, uh, like a whey protein, something like that, to see if you could get that. Because obviously that's going to be a less expensive way to get that response as opposed to a branched amino acid supplement. Right, so wipe off board time. A little bit easier to show this sometimes. I'm just gonna prop this up. So I'll just hold it. So if we got our muscle protein synthesis, okay, and you have a normal response, which is this. Okay. If you give a free form, what we were seeing was this. Okay, so you could extend it, all right? Now, when you're talking about, that's the rate of muscle protein synthesis. I should have brought my eraser up with me. <laughs> my lovely assistant is going to help me. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So now if you're talking about, oh, that's pretty, okay, we'll just draw it above it. 
So if you're talking about plasma levels, because we're talking about, if we talk about, you know, a whole protein source versus a free form, okay? Well, that'll just be a tattoo for that side then. So, <laughs> let's see. Yep, you're right. That's why she makes the big bucks and I just, I just come to speak. <laughs> so if you're talking about the plasma levels of the amino acids, you know, if you're looking at leucine going like this, some of us say, my only thinking as to why maybe a whole protein wouldn't work is that you're already kind of maxed out here. Okay, you're, and protein, a whole protein takes time to be digested, even though whey is digested pretty quick. Whereas a branch chain supplement, if you added it, say, here, you're going, it's a super physiological response because it's not, it's not, it doesn't take that much time to digest because it's already pre-digested. So you would get a response of, and it would come back down very quickly. That's my hypothesis. I don't, you know, it would be interesting to test. So does that help answer your question? Okay, good. Yeah, oh, well, welcome to research, my friend. <laughs> I think it's good, then. Thank you. Hey, Lane, a question on that. Yeah. So if you're developing a new protein, then ideally, based on that, you'd want the standard release of the protein and then somehow encapsulating or whatever, if you could, to delay the response of the leucine. So from a convenience standpoint, they could ingest it at once. Well, I think you'd want a leucine, re you'd want a leucine response up front. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, if you could if you could somehow encapsulate leucine so it's released, you know, two right. hours later or something, I mean, yeah, I mean, that would be extremely expensive and complex, but if you could make it happen, you might have, you know, a hell of a product on your hands. <laughs> hell of a product on But, um, I mean, it's okay to think in hypotheticals because, yeah, it's okay to think in hypotheticals because, you know, people smarter than me make that kind of stuff happen, you know, so. So, what I, what I really wanted to get at with the duration stuff and the, is that kind of up front, look, our, our study with, with protein distribution, you know, you see that eating too protein, like enough protein uh, too infrequently is a bad thing, right? It's not going to maximize muscle protein synthesis. But also, I think eating too frequently is probably a bad thing for anabolism as well, okay? Oh, what happened? Go to the webinar. I'm reminding you. Just go to, uh, yeah, there we go. So I've, for about, about the past five years, I've had the theory that, you know, eating too infrequently is, is, is suboptimal for muscle mass and eating too frequently is suboptimal for muscle mass because I think if you eat too frequently, you'll initiate this refractory response, okay? And I'm really glad that it's actually it's actually kind of already been shown. Um, in terms of like uh, bodybuilders uh, or you know, people telling you, you know, eat small meals throughout the day because you'll get a consistent stream of amino acids and that will you know, maximize your response. Well, this has already been done in an experiment. This is an experiment by Behe that was in the Journal of Physiology back in 2001. And what they did was they infused amino acids for six hours, okay? So this is the amino acid response. So you see it goes up. And that is more than enough to, to start muscle protein synthesis. And then it stays there, right? Look at what happens to muscle protein synthesis. Goes up, goes back down. Just like what we showed in our experiment, okay? Except it went down and it never came back up, you know, because you're maintaining this, okay? So that refractory response is maintained. So that's why I think it's better maybe to let your plasma amino acid levels rise and fall, okay? You get it. You, it kind of like resetting the system. So what's the optimal mill frequency then? Well, you want enough mill frequency to get multiple stimulations of muscle protein synthesis, right? Because we know that three is better than one, you know, based on, that, based on that experiment we did. But you want it infrequently enough to prevent you just becoming refractory all the time like we just showed. So I'm really glad there's this guy named Stu Phillips up in Canada who does a lot of this research. <laughs> He's great. Um, this is his group here. Areta is one of his uh, graduate students. So he looked at a 12-hour 12 12 window of feeding, okay? 
and either fed bolus, which was two meals, so one meal every six hours, intermediate, which was uh, four meals, which is one meal every three hours, and then pulse, which was one meal every hour and a half, I believe, over a 12-hour period. And what he found was the one in the middle, you know, the four meals, was superior. So I, postul I postulate that the optimum meal frequency might be anywhere around you know, every three or four hours for maximizing muscle protein synthesis. So I get to say, nah, 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 I was right on that one. At least I think I was. 